Well, welcome everybody. Welcome to Listen Up Pearl Street Analog Night. This is always fun. Uh, it was a great room. Uh, it was really cool to be here in Denver. Um, my name is Jeff Coates. I'm the brand director for Project Audio Systems, Smico Phono Cartridges, Rotel Electronics. Um, do a little bit of marketing with Sonos Faber as well. My colleague Woody Compton, our national sales manager, is in the back of the room. Uh, we're going to spend a little time today talking about and then playing, playing Project Audio Systems products. Um, before we get started, though, I really wanted to take just a minute and talk about what we think is really, really important, kind of fundamentals for a really good turntable. Um, Woody, can you reach those bearings on the back? Uh... You mean thing looks like a bullet? Yeah. It's Two things back there look like shell casings. Uh, so this is something that I really enjoy talking about. Um, every quality turntable. The best way to think about these things is they have to have an excellent drivetrain. It's a mechanical device. So it can be as pretty as you want. It can be made out of whatever materials you want. But if it's not mechanically sound, you're not going to get good performance. And it all starts with what we're passing around here. This is the main, the bearing housing you'll find. That's actually off of a, an E1, a 399 project turntable. But that's a Teflon lined brass bearing well with a really nice, a very high hardness, polished stainless steel ball bearing that's in the bottom of it. So that part is what the entire system revolves around, if you'll forgive the, uh, forgive the pun. Um, and I want to show you what's important about that. So this is a debut Carbon Evo. This is a $600 retail turntable from Project. Best of list from anybody who's ever written one about turntables. Uh, but that bearing weld that's passing around, that's actually what's in this table. So here's the subplatter for this table. There's the bearing surface. That's that stainless steel part that goes through the subplatter. But check this out. As I pop this into that bearing well, see how long that took to settle in there? And that is literally how long it takes for the air to be displaced from that bearing well from the actual bearing surface of the subplatter. Very, very, very tight tolerances. So that right away means we're getting really smooth, very consistent rotation from this mechanical system. If you don't have that, what you're going to hear is actually rumble. So you'll hear the bearing noise as it either jams around inside that bearing well, or even worse, maybe there's a flat spot on the bearing and you hear that noise. It's a consistent low frequency distortion that comes into the system. If it causes the point of the stylus to move, it doesn't matter why. If that stylus is moving, it is creating an electrical signal inside the cartridge, which is being transmitted to the rest of your system, and you hear it through your speakers. So it all starts there, that main bearing. The other thing that we really, really spend a lot of time on is the motor and the power supply that drives them. A lot of companies, and this has been since the beginning of turntables, the cheapest and easiest way to get a motor to turn at a certain speed was to reference it to the line signal from your, your voltage coming out of the wall. So here in the US, 120 volts AC, 60 cycles. So that means that waveform flips back and forth 60 times a second. I don't know about you, you might have had some power problems at your house one time or another. Brownout, slightly low voltage, power outage, etc. I live in Texas, we're on our own grid. I'm lucky that we get power half the time. So if you are referencing the speed at which your motor turns to the electrical, the quality of the electrical signal coming out of your outlet, you are going to have some variation in the speed of that turntable. And if that's ever happens consistently while you're playing a record, that's what we talk, talk about as wow or flutter. So that's the speed of the system either decreasing or increasing as it plays. All right. So inside of a project table, we do something very, very cool. We have a product in here called a speed box. So our little power supply that plugs into the wall, we're actually sending out 15 volts DC. So we actually convert that AC signal to DC, send it back inside the turntable, and there's a circuit board in there that creates a fresh AC voltage. So we have a little crystal oscillator that we reference that DC voltage to, and we create a fresh 16 volt AC waveform that we use to feed the motor. So now we're completely isolated. We don't care what's happening electrically. These tables will give you exactly the correct speed, anything from 50 to 60 hertz line frequency, 100 to 240 volts anywhere in the world. So very, very cool without any sort of extra box. Usually if you have that, it's a five or $600 accessory. So we've got a great motor, got a great main bearing. Tone arm. 
This thing really has a simple job, right? All it's got to do is keep the tip of the stylus locked into the groove. Sounds pretty easy, but when you think about that, that is a tiny, 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 in this case, elliptical diamond that we're keeping inside this groove as it's rotating around the system. And if there's any play inside that arm, and you'll find this, and I love people to come in and they do a talk with me. It's like, first thing you do, go up, check another turntable, gently grasp the tone arm, just rotate it. If there's any give there, that means that that tone arm, as it's trying to track the surface of the record, it's violently slamming back and forth into the walls of the groove, which on the microscopic level, if you were locking, looking at it down there, is terrifying. Mm -hmm. Doesn't look like much up here, but it's a lot. And again, that could create additional distortion inside the system. So to get away with that, or to get away from that, inside all of our arms, so in this case, it's actually a two-point pinpoint bearings, so a really high hardness stainless steel ball, and a really nice precision hand adjusted uh, bearing and then a really nice, um, excuse me, a really nice ball bearing to handle the horizontal motion. As we get more sophisticated, we'll talk about there's actually a four point pinpoint bearing in some of our better arms, but great tone arm. Single piece of carbon fiber from the gimbal all the way out to the tip of the stylus. So it's not a lot of five, $600 tables. You look at them, it's like, an aluminum arm tube, and then they glue a little plastic head shell onto it. Totally different resonant cap characteristics. Really is not the best way to get the best sound out of that arm. So great quality tone arm. And then we cap it all off with a really nice cartridge. Um, here in the US, I'm a little biased, but this is the best place to buy a Davy Carbon Evo. Because uh, here, for the same price as you get one in Europe, you actually get a Sumiko Rainier photo cartridge instead of a Ortofon 2M Red. Um, Ortofon is a fine cartridge. The Sumiko we've designed to be a little better tracker under a lot of different circumstances. And probably most importantly, it's more upgradable. Because one thing I love about analog is once you get the bug, you're gonna wanna make little changes to the system. All right, so we actually have four different up upgrade style either available for a debut Carbon Evo or that Sumiko Rainier. So you can move up from the Rainier to the Olympia to the Moonstone to the Wellfleet, get better performance, wider bandwidth, and more of that dimensionality, that real deep spatial kind of presentation as you move up. Uh, we even make a drop-in stylus that'll play 78s. So if you go down that particular path, this is a 78 RPM capable table, you can play back those old shellacs safely. Um, if anybody's ever bought one of those at a garage sale and accidentally played it with an elliptical diamond stylus, it's terrifying, you know what happens. You just sort of get the, you're pulling up a little peel of shellac off your stylus. Don't do that. Make sure you've got the appropriate 78 RPM capable stylus. One last little thing. Um, actually, two. Man, there's just so much to talk about with this table. Um, even the cable comes with this really, really good. And I kind of joke around, like, what's the first thing you do? You get an audio component, it comes with a piece of cable. What do you do with that? Throw it away, throw it away maybe tie your trunk shut with it when you're heading home, you know? Um, this is actually a really solid phono capable cable. It's not just a cheap plastic uh, molded coaxial cable. Uh, two equal size conductors for positive and negative. Really good quality separate shield and ground. Uh, this is about a $70 retail cable if you were to purchase it. And that comes with any of our cables starting at like 400 bucks. So any project table really comes with a really high quality photo cable right out of the cart. Um, and then lastly, now it's really lastly, the platter. Um, we use a uh, lot of different materials you know, our least expensive table, we use a phenolic resin, very consistent, very inexpensive. Uh, we use really cool tempered glass in our T1 series, because again, very great way to get consistent mass and rotation. Um, next step up, steel. So this is a really cool stamp steel platter. Um, steel, like most metals, has a problem, it has a tendency to ring. Um, so we actually install this little damping ring. This is a 3M thermoplastic elastomer that's installed. Um, helps eliminate some of that platter uh, ringing. But like everything else, if you want to, we also make an acrylic platter upgrade for this. We make a sub platter upgrade. There's all kinds of ways to hot, hot rod a tapey carbon evo. Uh, that's one of the things we really dig. I mean, that, I hate that concept of a terminal purchase. You know, you buy a product, you want to do an upgrade, step one to the upgrade, throw away what you already had. You know, step two, go to the store, buy something new. Um, we can actually take one of these tables and get significantly better performance. Stylus upgrade, platter upgrade, sub platter upgrade, power supply upgrade, all kinds of cool stuff you can do. 
That's even more true when you get into some of our higher end decks. So what we've got playing up here, this is our new X8. This is a $2,500 retail turntable. Um, stock, if you're just to take it out of the carton, get it ready to play. Um, it would have this excellent tone arm fitted to it. This is our 9cc Evo tone arm. Um, this is a tapered carbon fiber arm tube. So again, single piece from the head shell all the way back to the pivot point. Uh, but it's tapered, so it has different resonant frequencies as you move up and down the arm. So it's very, very difficult to get any external resonance that's going to impact this, uh, this arm and cause it to uh, transfer energy over to the phono cartridge. Um, the tone arm itself, it's actually a four-point um, ABEX 7 ball bearings, each one in a little, you know, mounted in a separate little gimbal. Um, this is a very high-precision arm. These are all adjusted by hand in the factory in the Czech Republic before we box them up. Um, fantastic arm. Termination on this is a standard um, five pin detachable DIN cable. Um, so stock, it comes with a DIN to RCA cable. Or, um, so you can connect it to any phone or preamp you like. But one of the cool things about Project and the way that we've wired up all of our turntables is they are inherently electrically balanced. So what this means is the turntable itself, the electrical signal ground, so the left and right negative return, if you will, and the chassis ground are kept separate. Almost every other turntable manufacturer out there ties the left channel audio signal ground to the chassis ground. Now this is great because in some cases if you've got a bunch of electronics and they're, you know, you're connected to a cable TV system, maybe your DVD player wasn't properly grounded, your surround process, whatever else, you're probably not going to get noise or hum. So that's why a lot of people take that shortcut. Um, for us, we'd really like to have that additional, that lower noise floor that True Balance Operation offers, but now we can actually run it as a balanced component. Anybody play around the studios at all? Bless you. Do any sort of live recording or anything? Like, you would never take a microphone and connect it to a mic preamp or a console via an unbalanced cable. You just wouldn't do it. This is a tiny, tiny, tiny little electrical signal. We're now going to send it down out into the world and hope that it doesn't pick out additional interference from the products around it. Um, same with the moving coil photo cartridge. We're talking something a fraction of a millivolt. Tiny, tiny, tiny little product, little amount of voltage. And we're going to send it to a phono preamp. That phono preamp is going to try to amplify that by about 60 decibels. That's about twice as much amplification as even a huge power amplifier is being asked to do. So we're taking our smallest signal, we're providing the greatest amount of gain, and we're going to provide the least amount of protection. It doesn't make any sense. So we really, we could do this as sort of a hot rod thing to our tables, but three years ago we really started talking about, like, let's make this a feature. Uh, so now, and then really any of our turntables, you can now run them true balanced. So this is, we have true balance capable phono stages starting at $4.99 and running up to two grand that will accept a balanced signal from the turntable into the phono preamp right away that gives us two big advantages. A, signal to noise. We pick up about 15 dB additional signal to noise. So the difference between the external electrical and electromagnetic noise and the signal goes way up. And we get about extra 5 dB of signal. So what this translates to is, well, first, the first time you connect it, you think you broke something. Because it's just like, because um, usually when you're queuing up your record, you, know, you can always kind of hear the background hiss of your phono stage or there's something. You can always kind of hear it. Dead quiet. So completely silent. Um, much more dynamic. Tremendous amount of more deep bass impact. Just kind of really does all that audiophile wonderful stuff. It kind of rises up from this completely quiet background. Um, and we offer that starting, you know, X1B, X2B, these products starting around $1,100, $1,200 have a direct balanced connection on them. Um, but any of our turntables, you can have a DB Carbon Evo, put a moving coil cartridge on it. We have an RCA to balanced connection that's now available on any of our phono preamps. Or something like an X8, you can go directly five pin to XLR and wire into the phono preamp via the balanced connection. So pretty cool stuff. Um, X8, $2,500 as it ships from the factory. Um, this is where we start having a lot of fun with tone arms. We make a, an upgrade S-shaped arm. So if you're the type of person that is really experimenting with a lot of photo cartridges, you want to be able to easily swap them on and off the arm with no, uh, no decrease in performance. We can do that. Um, we also make a premium version of the, our carbon fiber tone arm. So this is actually a tapered carbon fiber wrapped around aluminum. Um, and then, please come up after we're 
done talking here, the gimbal housing on this thing is just ridiculous. It's unbelievably massive housing that these high precision bearings sit in. So it's a Swiss ABEX 7, very high uh, tight tolerance bearing, internal silver wiring, tremendous performance. But I love this because you can start, you know, we all have like these $20,000 aspirations, right? It's like, oh man, what I'd really love to have is that turntable. But it's really rare to find a table that you can start with something that's awesome, 2,500 bucks, and then you can build it over time and it'll run with 10, $15,000 tables. So that's one of the cool things, X8, extension nine, extension 10, any of our tables can be upgraded as you go. It's a very cool stuff. So what we're gonna be playing up here, I've got a uh, X8 with our upgrade uh, S-shaped tone arm. Uh, Sumiko low output moving coil photo cartridge. This is a $500 retail photo cartridge, great performer. Wired balanced to our best phono stage. This is the Phonobox RS2. So this is a balanced input. Then I'm actually running unbalanced, just RCA out to a really nice solid state Macintosh preamp, a lovely Macintosh 75 watt per channel uh, vacuum tube power amplifier, and then the new um, really cool Macintosh M01. This is a really a throwback look, but all modern drivers, <laughs> modern crossover, really cool new imagining um, of a classic Mac design. So <clears throat> I'm gonna play a little Willie Nelson. I love this track. Uh, Everybody knows what Willie sounds like, and if it's wrong, you're going to know it right away. So this is a track called I Love You to the Day I Die, uh, written by Chris Stapleton and Rodney Crow, and a really, really great performance by Willie and the family band. I'm going to cue that up.